to the Powerhouse E-Church. We are so excited that you have decided to join us this morning. It's Palm Sunday, y'all, and we're excited for another opportunity to give God praise. For it is in Jesus' name that we have the victory. And it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. You've got to open your mouth and declare every day that Jesus still
thank you for sharing your time and space with us. During this pandemic, this coronavirus, we are in heavy prayer, and we know God is going to deliver us and bring us out of this. We are not moving in fear, but we are rather moving in faith, because we still believe that our God is able. Let's go straight to the Word of God. We're not going to keep you long. We're going to just enter into the Word of God. We're going to the book of Exodus. A small teaching for you just to encourage you while you're going through this uh, process. Exodus 9, we're going to start at the 13th verse and we're going to go down to the uh, 26th verse. Once again, that's Exodus 9, amen, starting at the 13th verse and we're going down to the 26th verse. Bless the name of God. And I believe by faith that you have the word, and we're just going to go straight into it. The word of the Lord reads on this wise, and the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. So we understand and we do know the story of the Exodus. This is the kind of God has called Moses to deliver his people out of the hand of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And it's time for them to be released. Pharaoh reluctantly kept holding on to the children of Israel. But God wanted them to release. This is the seventh plague that God has used to get Pharaoh to release his people out of his clutches, out of the hands of bondage. God was ready for them to be released, that they may serve. I want you to understand any and everything that's been holding you has got to let you go. God is not going to allow you to stay trapped and stay in bondage. You must be free. 14, for I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people, that they may know that there is none like me in all the earth. I believe that every now and then God has to allow some things to happen to make us grow. To allow us to understand that it's not about us, that it's about God, and that God is totally in control. And that whatever's been keeping you, and whatever's been acting as if it's greater than, and, and more powerful than, we all have got to understand that God has leveled the playing field. Everybody's in the same predicament. Everybody's as vulnerable as the next man. And I believe that's what God is doing in this hour and in this season. Well, be encouraged people of God. God always has a way of escape for his people. We have 15. For now I will stretch out my hand, and I will be, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. 16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. God says, I'm going to use Moses to bring my people out, and I want to raise Pharaoh up, just so that I can show my power, just so I can show my strength. A lot of times God allows us to go through things just so we can see the power of God. Even in the midst of this pandemic that we're going through, some of you God has covered. Some of you God has kept. Some of you God has kept strong and kept economically. You're still eating food. You're still able to get yourself up in the morning and take care of yourself. Even in the midst, some of you was already declared positive from the coronavirus, but you've still been able to make it through life circumstances, day-to-day -day circumstances. It's because God's showing you his power. That there's nothing more powerful than the power of God. That God can bring you out of anything and take you through anything. Let's continue with the word. 17. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou will not let them go. In other words, Pharaoh, you have nerve to hold on what belongs to God. You have nerve to think that you can keep God people in bondage when God has called them out. And I'm telling you right now, whatever's been trying to hold you back and hold you down and stop you from progressing and moving in the things of God and serving your God, it can no longer hold you. 18, behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hell, such as have not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. 19, sin therefore now and gather thy path. And all that thou hast in the field, for upon every man, beast, 
which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hell shall come down upon them and they shall die. God says, I'm going to sit a plague because I want my people to be released, but I'm going to give you instructions while this plague is going on. He says, I want you to get everything that's outside, get it in the house. And I came to tell somebody, talk to somebody around today to tell you it's time to get back to the house. It's time to get yourself in the house. Anything that's outside of the house was going to be affected by this plague, by this hell. And God says, Moses, when you go and talk to the people, make sure you tell the people, bring all their cattle and everything that's outside of the house, bring it back in the house. And I'm telling you, this is an hour for the church. Those of you who've been saved, those of you who've been serving God, you left church, you were angry with church, got upset with the pastor, it's time to go back to the house. It's time to get back in the house. God says, I want my people out of bondage of sin, and I want them back in the house. 20. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the, into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. You cannot stay outside of the house. If you regard the word of God, you will get right back in the house. If you disregard it, you will stay outside the house. 22, and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch forth thy hand toward heaven, that they there may be held in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field, there throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hell, and the fire ran along them upon the ground, and the Lord rained hell upon the land of Egypt. So there was hell, and fire mingled with hell, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. 25, and the hell smoked throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hell smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. 26, and this is where we're going to end. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hell. I came to tell somebody today, it's time for us to get back to Goshen. It's time for us to get back to the house of God. It's time for us to get back to the covering of the blood of Jesus. It's time to get back to the place of our worship and our service towards God. I think the church sometimes has got so caught up in the community of the church and we lost our ability to serve and worship our God in the beauty of holiness. God is calling us back to Goshen. And I don't know about you, but I claim it over my family's life. I claim it over my church's life. I claim it over my sister's life, my mother's life, that we are citizens of Goshen. And this way shall not get us. We decree it and declare it in the name of Jesus. I declare it for you and your family that you are citizens of Goshen. And this way will not come down. I want you to start giving God some praise and some worship even right now. As I come to a close in this text, I want you to believe and trust God that you are a citizen of Goshen and that God is calling you back home to him, back to a place of worship, back to a place of servitude, back to a place of praise, back to a place where you give God all the glory. You're not worried about the pastor. You're not worried about the preachers the missionaries, the deacons. You're not worried about the church. God says, I want you to go back to me. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to stay encouraged. I want you to stay strong. And I want you to believe that you are a citizen of Goshen. Always remember we're praying for you. You're in our prayers. Remember, if you got the faith, God got the power. Thank you for your time and space at the Powerhouse Church. I would like before we go to pray for you and pray for your family and pray as citizens of Goshen that God will continue to keep us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for this word. 
We know that we are trying times and testing times. We know, God, we're in this pandemic, but God, we also know that you are more powerful than Corona. We also know that you are able to do all things but fail. Father, I pray right now that you meet the need of someone right now. Someone may be in the hospital battling with this virus. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you touch it right where they are. In the name of Jesus. I pray right now someone's faith may be shaken through this situation that's going on. Father, I pray right now, God, that you strengthen their faith in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, that you will show your strength even in the midst of this pandemic. In the name of Jesus. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise because we know that victory belongs to the citizens of the ocean. God, we lift you and we give you praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.